Welcome everyone. Thank you all for joining this session. We're, we are very lucky to be joined by Danilo Giponi from EPV Technologies, who will be introducing the new Docker and ZCX technology. And then we'll also explain how uh, EPV implemented an application on that platform. As usual, feel free to leave your questions in the chat box and Danilo will answer them towards the end of the presentation. And we will be very grateful if you could also leave session feedback as well using the link that I'm about to paste in the chat box. And with that said, over to you, Danilo. Okay, can you hear me? Can you give me a confirmation that you hear what I'm saying? Yep, I can hear you fine. Okay, good morning to everybody. Uh, I am just uh, the front man today on this paper. So the paper is a registered paper. You will see in a few seconds, I will uh, start it uh, and it will go up to the end automatically. And the speaker on the paper is Matteo Bottazzi, a colleague of mine, but you will see that. And then again, the paper is focused on the new Docker and Z6 technology from IBM. And uh, this is a session for BA, so uh, if you if you should leave uh, your feedback at the end if you did uh, like this presentation or not. Hi and welcome. My name is Matteo Bottazzi and I'm one of the EPV developers. In this presentation, I show you the project of running EPV on IBM ZOS Container Extensions, or ZCX. The main goal of this presentation is to briefly explain what are ZCX and Docker, but also how EPV is planning to take advantage of these technologies. We'll talk about the EPV architecture in Docker and how easy it is to deploy and run EPV. Let's dive into the topic. One of the EPV's main advantages is that allow you to make ZOS performance analysis and capacity planning while running outside the mainframe. But with the new ZCX, which runs on the ZIIP processors, you can still save money while keeping your SMF data on ZOS, ensuring high standards of security and performance that no other platform can offer. The ZOS container extensions has been introduced in version 2.4 of the ZOS operating system. Probably the best feature of ZCX is that application that in the past could only run on Linux now they are able to run on ZOS as Docker containers with virtually no impact on the general purpose processors. This way, EPV products can run on ZOS with no changes on the source code. Before explaining how EPV works with these new technologies, let's define them in a simple way. From a ZOS perspective, in this picture, you can see how ZCX is structured. The first involved component is the ZCX virtualization layer, which let communicate ZCX with ZOS. In fact, ZCX runs in a standard ZOS address space, an STC, which includes, again, the ZCX virtualization layer, a Linux kernel, the Docker engine, and the application containers. The Linux resources inside the ZCX address space are provided from ZOS in this way. Storage. The storage is provided through ZOS VSAM linear datasets. Network. The access to the network is an high-speed virtual same host link to the ZOS TCP IP protocol stack. And Docker instances are ZOS Dynamic VIPA. Memory. It is managed by VSM, the Virtual Storage Manager, and the RSM, the Real Storage Manager. 
processors. Virtual CPUs are provisioned as TCBs within the ZCX address space. According to IBM, at least 95% of ZCX work should run on ZIAP processors. Of course, this could be possible only if enough ZIAPs are available. Because of the possibility to run on ZIAP, ZCX can also take advantage of simultaneous multi-trading or SMT. Docker allows software developers to create portable programs and wrap them in containers. Portable means that wherever you install Docker, your containers will work. The main difference between containers and virtual machines is that containers virtualize the operating system instead of the hardware. So, with containers, you can deploy new application without the need of a brand new operating system installation. As you can see in the picture, Docker acts as a runtime engine to serve one or more applications. A single application can wrap multiple containers and the only operating system involved is the host operating system. Of course, with Docker, you can configure your working environment and decide how the containers will behave inside it. You can share network, processors and storage between the containers. Also, you can monitor if the resources assigned to a specific container are adequate. For example, you have the possibility to manage the CPU used by each container. There are a lot of available options, but here we will see only the most interesting. The first option is the CPUs, which represents the maximum number of CPUs that a container can use. Another interesting option is CPU shares, which is the container's weight in a concept very similar to PRSM to ZO in ZOS. And the last parameter is a CPU quota. And this time the concept is very similar to capping on ZOS. And uh, so you can combine all these options to obtain um, the maximum setting on your CPUs. Of course, you can also define the amount of memory that a container can use and uh, some other options about memory and the containers. But um, again, in this slide, we only show the most interesting options. And uh, the first one is the memory option, uh, which is used to set the maximum amount of memory a container can use. And the other option is the memory swap, which is the amount of memory a container is allowed to swap to disk. Inside ZOS, you can define multiple ZCX address spaces and assign them to different service classes. SMF records like 30 and 72 can be used for capacity management activities about it. ZCX has hardware and software requirements. Hardware, IBM Z14 with GA2 driver level, IBM Z14 ZR1, or IBM Z15. And the software, even if it is a base element on ZOS, so you don't have to pay any extra license, you need to have at least ZOS 2.4 and ZOS MF 2.4. To install ZCX, you can follow the instructions contained in the Red Book from IBM getting started with ZOS container extensions and Docker. 
You can also find the code of this red book in this presentation. From our experience, we can say that if you already customized ZOSMF, then ZCX setup is not a complex activity. And uh, instead, if you have to customize ZOF, ZOS SMF, it will require some more effort, especially for RACF definitions. Now that we briefly presented ZCX and Docker, let's talk about how EPV is planning to use them. Starting from ZOS, we define a ZCX instance named ZCX EPV. Then we put inside it four containers, FTP container, EPV container, HTTP logs container, HTTP HTML container. Every container shares some common storage areas. Let's have a look at what is the purpose of each container. The FTP container is basically a dedicated FTP server and its main function is to send SMF data to the EPV container. The EPV container is composed by a bundle of EPV products and a database server. For example, a typical configuration could be EPVZ parser, EPV for ZOS and MariaDB as database server. Its goal is to take SMF data and produce HTML reports. The HTTP logs container is a dedicated HTTP server which allows a constant monitoring on the EPV activities through the EPV focal point portal accessible with your web browser. The last one is the HTTP HTML container that again is another FHTTP server, but its purpose is to serve the final EPV reports that you can access with a web browser. Here the complete picture on how all the containers cooperate. Remember, we say that they share common storage areas and this is the way they work together. The FTP container receives data from ZOS and put it in a folder. This folder is shared with the EPV container where the EPVZ parser is configured to read data from that specific folder. On the EPV container, the EPV products create log files and the EPV focal point portal. These files are created in a folder that is shared with the HTTP logs container. In this way, when you connect to the HTTP logs container, you can browse EPV focal point and monitor the EPV activities. On the EPV container, the EPV products create the final reports in a folder, which is shared with the HTTP HTML container. In this way, you can access them through a web browser by connecting to the HTTP HTML container. To better understand the architecture, let's have a look at our ZCX test environment. So first of all, we connect to the ZCX IP address we set up during the configuration of ZCX, and then with an SSH connection, we log in. After the login, you should see the following message. And here it is, as simple as that. So once you log into ZCX, you have access to all the containers you defined. And uh, starting from this single connection to ZCX, you can issue commands to each container. So for example, you can connect to one container and have a look at the processes that are running inside that container and also um, for better understanding the architecture in this case we just issued a docker ps no trunk command 
and uh, in this way all the available containers are listed and a lot of details are provided about the containers so the container id the port the names and also many many other details that we removed uh, to better fit the, the screenshot in this slide maybe you're wondering how difficult it is to get started with all this stuff so let's talk about the deployment if you have an internet connection available then the easiest way to deploy is to connect to hub.docker.com and pull our project otherwise if you don't have any internet access you have to manually load our project in your docker environment if you choose the hub.docker.com way simply register and log in to the website if you want to avoid connecting to the docker online repository you can run these docker load commands to copy the needed epv components in your docker environment The last thing you need to do in both cases is to prepare the environment by running our setup.sh. As you can see, set up the EPV container is pretty easy and straightforward. But now let's have a look on how you can work with the EPV environment that we set up. In the last slide, we run setup.sh to configure the environment. Well, at the end of the process, the sh also starts epvz parser, so that with no additional action, you're ready to parse SMF data. If you want to check if epvz parser is up and running, you can run the following Linux command and check if the, in the output you can find the epvz parser agents handler.pl program. To send the SMF files to the FTP container, you can use the following example. After the FTP of the SMF files is performed, you should see the files in the $EPV path, user profile, EPV, input, EPV is a parser input, SMF input folder. And uh, of course, this folder is located on the EPV container. As soon as EPV is a parser realizes that new files are coming, it renames them by adding the dot parsing suffix. The report production starts by default at 3 p.m. in the night. But this is one thing that you can configure. Again, you can always check what's happening in the EPV container by issuing Linux command as shown here. To monitor all the processing, you can use your browser to connect to the HTTP loads container where EPV focal point is being constantly updated. And finally, to have a look at the EPV report, you just need to connect to the HTTP HTML container through your web browser. Thank you for joining us. And if you have any question, feel free to ask now. I'll do my best to answer. Okay, Piara, I hope, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine, yep. Yeah, okay, that was very quick. But then again, it was mainly focused on the uh, new Z6 uh, functionality provided by IBM. Uh, do you know if there are any questions? Um, so far, we're not getting any questions coming through just yet. But as a reminder uh, to people in the chat, if you want to ask, feel free to write in the chat box. Or if you would prefer to say it um, in person, then I can... Um, I can unmute you, so just let me know on, on the chat box. Uh, any, anyway, I have put the, the slides that we projected on the material from the uh, Share UK, so you can download them.
And if you have any questions, both my email and the mail of Matteo, my colleague, that was the one speaking throughout the paper, are available there. So we will be available also afterwards to address uh, eventually specific questions. So Again, we, we thought this was interesting because it's a brand new technology and I don't think it's yet that famous. I, I don't know how many knew about this before this paper. Yeah, okay, thank you then. so much for presenting, uh, Danilo. I really appreciate that. Um, it's very uh, insightful. Okay, so that's the end. Uh, and again, eventually people can contact me through you, through the share or directly to us. Yeah, de definitely. Um, so yeah, just as again, as, as a reminder, as you can see on the screen as well, uh, please do leave your session feedback. And um, I've also put in the link to um, donate to NHS Charities Together. Um, we're on the final leg to reach our goal. And um, if you've enjoyed this uh, free virtual conference this year, we would appreciate um, um, any donation, big or small, uh, which would help us reach the goal. Um, with that said, thank you once again, Danilo. Really appreciate your, your time and for presenting throughout um, the GSC agenda. Uh, so yeah, thank you for your support. and. Um, all the attendees, thank you so much as well for um, attending today. Um, I hope you all have an amazing rest of the day.